Well, hey guys, Silly Tuck here. Welcome back to an episode of ECW Extreme Championship Wrestling. This is Big Ass Extreme Bash. This is the final episode of 1998. And I, and I, I think I said last episode, you know, that the reason why things were coming out slower was because I just got out of a groove, and now that I'm back in the groove, uh, I'm starting to record more. You know what I mean? Once you, once you crack it, you know what I mean? That that, that kind of wall, once you... Once you once you punch a dent in it, you know what I mean? A brick falls out. There's a crack in the stone. You can kind of start to work away, and before you know it, you're back on. That's kind of what I'm thinking. Uh, anyways, we are in Hammerstein for this event, the final ECW event of 1998. We're going to see if we make a profit um, this episode, uh, and I'll probably look at the new people this episode, and then right after this, I'm going to record our year in review episode. And try to get that up uh, as soon as possible uh, after this. Probably shortly after. A couple, couple days at most. Because I will have it recorded. Um, I have no excuse. Without further ado, I think it's just time to do it. So we're going to open up with Paul Heyman's voice. He hypes up tonight's main event. It's the franchise versus the whole fucking show. Um, it's the... It's the champion versus the former champion, Rob Van Dam versus Shane Douglas. Um, you know, kind of highlights Shane Douglas's kind of struggles, but it also his successes, you know, being world champion this time last year, having beaten Bam Bam Bigelow, his former buddy, his former pal, our former employee before he was a big old bitch and left. Um... There's, uh, we recap his win over Tommy Dreamer at November to Remember, one of the biggest wins uh, of his career to beat, uh, kind of somebody who parallels him in a lot of ways on such a big stage. Um, but we also highlight RBD and his run with William Regal and his just path of excellence to this moment. Who will be champion coming out of tonight? Franchise or show? Well, you gotta stay tuned. We get a just incredible entrance. Uh, we only have two matches tonight, the main event and this next match. It's just incredible. Taking on Kurt Angle. You know, Kurt Angle called out anybody and everybody. You know what I mean? Anybody who thought they could take anything from him, take a beat down from him, could come out and do so. Incredible said, I'll one-up you. I'll take a beating from you and I'll give you a beating. Will he do so? Who knows? Maybe it's time to find out. It's Kurt Angle versus Just Incredible. Who will be victorious? In a 58 C minus, Kurt Angle is very good. Just incredible, not so much. Uh, in a good match, Kurt Angle defeats Just Incredible in 1240 by pinfall of an Angle Slam. Uh, Credible is outmatched from moment one. Uh, he has fucked up. He has fucked up real, real, real bad by thinking he could hang with Kurt Angle. Um, Angle rips him apart, like almost literally, tosses him around, you know, different suplexes, wear down holds, thinks about going for the ankle lock, but just decides to end it with an angle slam. Less work, you still stand in your statement. Uh, it's true, it's damn true. Kurt Angle's a problem. We move forward, and uh, we get another video package with Paul Heyman talking. Uh, you know, he says, he mentions uh, that next week, the first hardcore television of the new year, the first hardcore TV of 1999. Hooray! Hooray! It will be in the main event, Taz defending his ECW World Television Championship against Steve Carino as the television championship returns to TV because I haven't defended it on TV for like a few months. I'm a moron. That's the name of the game, the name of the belt, the name of the... Well, the name of the dealt. It's not how that works. Doesn't matter. I think it's an all right enough promo. Hyping us up for next week. It's a, it's a, it's a big match, you know. Um, Carino's come back, and he simply said, I want a shot at you, Taz. And Taz gave it to Carino. Because Taz has been on this war path. He's fighting everybody who comes near him. And who knows if he felt insulted by Carino. Remember, Carino... Uh, insinuated that this whole facade of wanting to be a fighting champion was all a sham, and that Taz was staying away from the real competition, people like himself. But now Carino's back in ECW, he's back for, out of kayfabe, about, about eight months, about eight months left on that deal. 
Um, and that's kind of my thoughts on him. He'll show up every every like n- every about six months for nine months, and then off six on nine. Uh, just kind of an all around hand to have uh, until I kind of decide that we're big enough to where realistically uh, we could sign him, um, and he wouldn't be a freelancer anymore. I would think that's like mid to high cult to where we could in game well because I can't actually go in and change it I have to go to the editor but that's where I think it makes the most sense to me when we're kind of a mid to high cult company uh, which could be some years down the road you know we're still trying to crack at a regional here but big step of that will be next year we're going different places you know I'm going to run the southeast a couple times see if we can't build stuff there um, but again that's that's a topic for the year in review episode which I'm going to do right after this anyways so you know watch that one <laughs> Uh, we get a segment with the Stormtroopers and the Suicide Pact, or the Suicide Blonde, excuse me, finishes the Suicide Pact. Um, Storm Candido and Dom Marie are backstage, and, and, and Cage and Hardcast will come up, and, and they kind of start hitting on Dom Marie. You know what I mean? A little, little like, oh damn, what the... Who, who, who the fuck are you? No, but... You know what I mean? I, I, I may not be the best at that. <laughs> No, just kidding. I'm totally fine. It just feels weird doing it to my computer screen. There's my dogs in the background. Anyways, um, Edge and Christian. I'm, I'm calling him Edge most of the time because it's weird to call him Sexton. Um, Hardcastle and Cage. How about that? Hardcastle and Cage, uh, you know, they, they kind of hit on Dom Marie. And um, Lance Storm and Candido are kind of like, yo, fuck off. That's our manager. Huh? The hell are you doing? And they're like, oh, chill, man. Chill. You know, we're just trying to. We're just trying to eye up the competition. Hey, 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 hey. And they're like laughing at each other. Hey. hey. And uh, Storm and Candida are just like, no, don't do that. Stop. Cage and Hardcastle are like, well, fuck you. And then they leave. Hooray. Um, yeah, just a little segment. Teasing teasing some friction between these two. Um, I wouldn't say really over Don Marine, but she's definitely part of the equation here. Uh, Cage and Hardcastle like women, and Storm and Candido have a woman manager. Anyways, I believe up next it's our main event of the evening. Actually, I think we have an entrance first. We do. Shane Douglas makes his way to the ring. He's got his robe out. It says franchise on it, his Ric Flair-esque robe, because he fucking hates Ric Flair. Um... Douglas makes his way to the ring for probably the biggest match of the past year for him. Um, you could argue that when he lost, the belt was bigger, but I think the opportunity to regain it is bigger. Um, he's taken on Rob Van Dam, a guy who has worked the entire year, his entire career, realistically, to get to this point. RV, excuse me, RVD beat Jerry Lynn, who was on fire at the time, to become world champion. So will RVD be able to carry this momentum into the event? But remember, Shane Douglas also has momentum. I talked earlier. He beat Dreamer. He's been on a couple wins now. He successfully coached his boys, the Stormtroopers, to becoming number one contenders. They couldn't win the belt, but still, they came back from being down, I believe it was 2-0, to win over the Hardy brothers, who are now the number one contenders. So, you know, there's some there's some quality there. Who will be champion? It's your main event of the evening. Van Dam Douglas. Fucking show versus franchise of ECW. Who is better and who will be champion? It's a 75 B minus. That's quite solid. And a bout that had superb wrestling, great heat. Rob Van Dam, was there ever a doubt in the world? Well, maybe because I kind of teased it before. Defeated Shane Douglas in 2118 by pinfall with a five star frog splash. Rob Van Dam makes defense number one of his ECW World Championship. It's a very good match. Um, it's probably like. I, I would think that it probably involves RVD's uh, like flashiness against Douglas's. I don't know what to call it. When, when I think of Douglas, right, he's more of a brawler, kind, kind of slower than everybody else. But he also plays at the crowd really well, which gets them involved, so it's not a giant, like, sleeper, like Orton style. Um, I like to think that he kind of gets the crowd going a little bit. Um, and then there's RVD, who's able to turn up the pace like that. Um, it's very obvious who your face heel dynamic is here, even though they're realistically both heels. 
Um, Van Dam is able to turn it on at the end, turns up the pace, turns up the base, turns up the space and the place and the place goes crazy or something. I don't know. I don't know how I'm able to rhyme like that. Um, actually, it's quite easy. I think of words and I say them. Uh, RVD turns it up though, hits a Van Daminator, hits a Van Terminator, hits a Van Sarah Connor, hits a Rolling Thunder. You know what I mean? Just, just running through those, those signature maneuvers of the RVD offense. Uh, and he's finally able to hit a five-star frog splash. Uh, I, I'd say maybe it's his, his second or third attempt at it, actually. Douglas has it scouted pretty well. One time he just rolls out of the way. The other one he gets the knees up. But he hits it finally, makes the cover. One, two, three. Uh, and something I guess I forgot to mention is there was probably some, like, hardcore usage there. You know what I mean? Like, maybe a table or two. Um, maybe a ch Probably a few chairs, I imagine. The two of them just smashing the shit of each other to try to become number one contender or not number one contender, excuse me, the ECW world champion. And uh, overall, overall, I think that works. That's that's a good way to end the, yeah, that's a good way to end the year, 1998. And uh, we get a 69C plus, we're up in seven. Uh, I, I hope there might have been some, you know what I mean, kind of like thoughts in the back of your head, like, hmm, who's, who's actually going to win this one? Because I, I think from the very beginning, right, it was pretty obvious it was going to be RVD, but then actually Douglas's performances uh, on the last show, right, he had like a 78 in ring, and he got a 93 rated segment, I think, or something like that. S some insane stuff. Um, I, I think maybe I kind of teased it, maybe maybe too much, um, that um, he could win. Um, but yeah, Big Ass Extreme Bash did really well. Um, I wanted to show you guys the rating of ECW from this past week. We got a 0 0.02, which I believe is the same. It's down, actually, uh, except for that was a way better show. So we're hoping that this will be a very big show. Um, and again, not Paul White. I say it every time. We're quickly going to switch up the TV controls thing here. We're going to set this to ECW Hardcore TV. I'm going to rename this Hard... Oh. Not hardcore, hardcore TV. There you go. That looks good. I'm also thinking that when we finally do crack cult, whenever that is in the future, um, as I said, we're gonna have to do some work probably in the southeast. Uh, the southeast isn't too far off compared to every other place, um, but it will take some work, and that's okay because I'm down to um, start running TV down there. You know what I mean? All these different places. I'm, I'm willing to kind of try to start to expand, even if we're going to lose some money. Um, just because I think as we expand, right, we're going to get the money anyways, right? We're going to make it up in the long run. Um, this is by the way, why I believe our shit went down. Um, last scene within the past six weeks. Yeah. So, I believe our TV contract, right, no longer covers outside of, like, I believe it no longer covers outside of the USA, or, or, or other regions of the USA, so the Southeast, though, I believe we can crack into, hold on, can I check back where we just were there, yeah, regional uh, visibility, past seven days, past seven days, so yeah, Southeast is where we should try to crack into next, and then we'll try to expand. Um, that's my ideas going forward. Um, we have Hardcore TV set. That looks good. Here's a little look at our champs still. Uh, next week's episode of Hardcore TV, it's going to be Taz putting his, like, year and, like, a half, pretty much, right? Like, year and... Hold on. Uh, I, I don't even know, but definitely at least a year. Uh, you can see, uh, when he... Actually, you can't see when he won it, but, like, that's, well, since the start of the save. He's been champion. Um, really, we had him defend it for the first time in February 98. I may have messed that up and not put the belt on the line one time. Um, but that's okay. That's okay. That don't matter. That don't matter. Um, overall, though, I, I really like the production of Taz. Let's move forward. Let's get into 1999, baby. Wow. What a, what a moment. Actually, you know what? I'm going to cut this off right here. You're going to have to watch the next episode. <laughs> um, yeah, see you then.